This is the Canopy Deluxe wiring kit. So this has got absolutely everything in it. You can do induction cooking. You've got multiple options for solar charging, uh, twin DC-DC chargers. Uh, I'll take you through the bits and pieces. So first of all, we've got the Victron Multi Plus 2 3000. This is a 3000 watt inverter charger and transfer switch so what it does is it does three things it's it's got a 3000 watt inverter unit like i said but it's also got a 120 amp 12 volt battery charger that is being fed by the 240 volt system when you plug in external shore power and then it's got a transfer switch built in as well it means as soon as the external power comes into the inverter and it realizes there's an external power supply it switches the inverter off, it changes over a relay and pushes the external 240 to the power outlets inside the canopy. And at the same time, it turns into a battery charger and charges whatever power is available into the batteries up to a maximum of 120 amps. That is a bit that has also got to be connected to all the 240 volt stuff. I come around and show you what we've got here. So, this is an external 240 volt 15 amp plug and point. So, you will have a cable going from here directly into the inverter. And then we have got two twin 10 amp 240 volt outlets and one 15 amp 240 volt outlet. We've also got mounting uh, bracket for RCDs. And we have got two RCDs in here, one 16 amp RCD and a 10 amp RCD. They are meant to be connected to the output of the inverter, going into the RCDs. And then the 10 amp RCD is for the double poles for the 10 amp sockets. And the 16 amp is for the 15 amp socket. We only put that in there in case you want to use a double hop induction cooker, because that will have a 15 amp plug on there or in case you want to plug in your caravan into your car and run the 240 volt in your caravan off the inverter that you've got in your car because that is possible with this kit. We've got a shunt here that is a Victron smart shunt. Then we have got two Orion TR smart DC DC battery chargers. These will be connected in parallel and be fed by two individual cables coming from your start battery. I'll explain that a little bit more uh, a bit later on. We've got a 50 amp solar regulator that can be connected to this 200 watt red arc solar panel. We've also got mounting rails for that solar panel so you can mount it on your canopy roof if you want to have a look. That is the shape of the mounting bracket. The way that works is you put your panel on here bolt it through the side. You can also glue it on here with Sika flex. Then you drill through the sides here, put Sika flex on the back. That goes onto your canopy roof. It's a very easy way of mounting a solar panel. And there's two of them. And then there's also an IP67 rated gland. So you can drill into a hole into the roof of your canopy. 16 mil hole. You put that into the hole put the nut on from underneath, screw it tight, there's a rubber seal here, and then this is hollow in the middle, so the cable can come through here. And once the cable is through, you can close this up, rubber squeezes around the cable, and it is waterproof. That way it's really easy to get a cable onto the roof of your canopy. For monitoring system, we've got the Serbo GX unit. This is a little computer that will connect to the Multi Plus with the RJ45 cable. It will connect to the Smart Shunt with a VE Direct cable. And it will also connect to the MPPT charger also with the VE Direct cable. So there's two cables of these that are part of the kit. The DC-DC chargers themselves, they do not get directly connected to the data inputs. Uh, you will just see the power from them going in and out of the DC system on your display. 
This is the Touch 50 display that connects to the Servo GX. It will give you all the information about your separate components. You will have a battery symbol here. You've got shore power input here. Your inverter is there. Your 240 output is there. You've got uh, your solar controller on here so you see what the solar is doing and you've also got your DC system in there where you can see how much power is flowing into the DC system like fridge and whatever you got connected or when there's power coming out of the DC system because your DC DC chargers are charging you will see how power comes out and flows into the battery very cool unit makes it really easy to monitor your complete system there's a lot more functionality to it you can turn on the 240 volt through the touch panel on that. You can monitor water and fuel levels. You can turn a water pump on and off. You can, you've got USB connections as well. So you can also connect a Wi-Fi range extender because this has got built-in Wi-Fi. The range isn't that great. So you can put external aerials on there. You can even connect a 3G, 4G modem onto it so your system can always report back into a database. That will also allow you remote access. It's very easy to set up. There's uh, videos from Victron on how to do that. And all you need to do is go to a website, put in an ID that you can see in here, register the system for yourself, and wherever you are in the world, you can remote log into your system, do software updates. A brilliant system for it. Uh, all these bits and pieces can be configured through a Bluetooth app called uh, Victron Connect. And what you do is you connect through Bluetooth to these individual units. That way you can program them. Uh, the only thing you can't program like that is the MultiPlus. But we put a programming tool as part of this kit. All you need to do is download the software onto your computer, plug this into USB, and then you can use the RJ45 data cable that would usually be connected to the Servo GX. Just connect that in here. That way you can connect to the MultiPlus, change the values in there the way you need them to be, and off you go. Other parts of this kit are, of course, the Egan DC Hub and the DC Hub bracket, which will allow you to connect all these bits and pieces together in a very easy way. How exactly? I'm going to show you a little bit later. You've also got a 300 watt KT Solar blanket. So just in case you are parked up for a longer period of time, you want to do induction cooking, you need a bit more charging power because you don't want to move for a few days, you can plug in the solar blanket. To do that, we have got a red Anderson plug cover and the Anderson plug as part of this so you can use that to have a plug-in point somewhere in your canopy, outside of your canopy, where you then can directly plug in the solar blanket, which will then run through the MPPT charger, and the Red Arc roof panel will run in parallel. So you can have both of them running at the same time. Uh, we've also got power outlets for DC. So we've got two of these panels as part of the kit as well. In here, you've got an Anderson plug, a cigarette lighter socket or accessory socket and a twin USB and you've got two of these in this kit as well you've also got two national lunar lights you can put these on your canopy doors or wherever else you think is a great idea for some lights and then all of these connect back to the DC hub so this will act as your fuse panel for everything obviously fuse kits here with maxi fuses, standard blade fuses, micro fuses, and mini fuses. You can use that for your vehicle, have that as spare fuses, and you can also use that for your DC hub. Uh, furthermore, we have got two twin MIDI fuse holders for the power distribution from the two DC DC chargers for their outputs and also for their inputs that will go onto the start battery. Then we've got all the locks that you need. We've got junction studs to connect both the DC-DC charger outputs together to then connect it to the DC hub. We've got heat shrink in here, which is the good heat shrink as well. This is dual wall heat shrink with resin core lining. So it means when you shrink it and it shrinks together, the glue on the inside will actually get soft and attach to the cable and the conduit. 
all the cable that you need for this is part of the kit as well. You can have a look in the description what cable you get with this. There's also sleeving for it. You get the 240 volt, 2.5 mil square cable with it, with silicon fiberglass sleeving. So you can actually have more insulation and you can wire this up according to standard. It's really important when you wire it up that you sleeve the 240 volt cable inside the silicon fiberglass sleeving to give you an extra layer of segregation in between the 12 volt DC and the 240 volt AC. Uh, also, just to note, all the GPOs, all the 240 volt power points are all double pole switching. That way, this is all according to the installation standard in Australia. Uh, furthermore, you get a set of ANL fuses. These are important when you choose your battery kit for this. It's important to choose the uh, twin battery kit for this because you need two batteries in parallel because this unit can draw up to 250 amps and a single battery is not able to supply the current. So when you choose your batteries, choose the twin battery kit that will come with the main battery cables and it will also come with the ANL fuse holder. This twin ANL fuse holder is part of the battery kit. And as you can see, you will get 150 amp fuse, uh, sorry, 250 amp fuses and two 300 amp fuses. This is for the DC hub power supply. This is for the power supply for the multi plus inverter. Also, the sleeving that comes with this is solid sleeving and all the cable is good quality Australian automotive grade cable that we use in the workshop all the time. I think we covered it all. These are all the parts that are part of this kit. For more information on all the separate products, pre please have a look inside the description that is on the product page. You can click further links as well. There's more information on the DC hub. There's a lot more information on all the separate Victron items. And you can also find a wiring diagram for this kit as part of the description. I've printed it out here. So we're going to have a look through it in the how to connect this video of what goes where. This will give you a clear description on how you have to put this whole kit together to make it work for you in your setup, wherever that might be. Thank you. I'll show you now how to put this deluxe canopy wiring package together. So part of this, you have to order the twin battery kit with it. And you can choose in between 100, 150 or 200 amp hour batteries. So these are two 100 amp hour batteries. So this would be a 200 amp hour total. Uh, have a look at the video for the twin battery kit as well. So you get more information on that. So what we would do is we would link positive to positive and negative to negative. These cables are part of the twin battery kit. And then we go from battery positive to our main ANL fuse holder. Okay, let's see if this holds together like this. Almost. We just do it like that so you get the idea. Uh, from the same battery you go to battery minus like it stays on the smart states on the smart shun and you go from battery minus to battery minus on here i'll leave that there so you get the rough idea of what this needs to look like and then you go from one of these fuse holders with two one bns cables you can crimp both one bns cables into a 70 by 8 lug and you go with those cables into the multi plus two. You put the 300 amp fuse in here and then two red 1BNS cables in a 70 by 8 crimp in here and you use 35 by 8 mil crimps for the battery positive here. Then you use two 1BNS cables from here as well. Same thing again. Crimp them both together into a 70 by 10 mil lug. And it goes from here to the multi plus two because this has got two terminals 
per positive and negative. So you got four terminals all together. This is to prevent voltage drop on the connection surface because there's a lot of current running through there. That way you've got the DC power supply to the inverter set up. The next thing you do is you run a 3BNS cable from the ANL fuse holder into your DC hub positive. You put a 150 amp fuse in here and on the negative side you go with a 3BNS cable from the shunt into the negative of the DC hub. That way you've got your power supply to the DC hub on the uh, house battery system established as well. Okay, we've got our primary power distribution established this way. The primary power from our house battery system to our two main components is done. I'll push this aside a little bit so we've got more room here to lay other bits and pieces out. What we need to do next is connect our DC-DC chargers, because we've got two of them, into the DC hub. So what we're using is two Orion TR Smart 12-12-30. These units will give 30 amp continuous output. They can boost up to 40 amps each for a very short period of time. The way to install these is You've got 6BNS cable as part of this kit. On your start battery, you use a twin MIDI holder with a 50 amp fuse in there and you run battery positive through it and then out and the negative you run through 6BNS cable as well. That way you're going to the back and the negative lands on the negative junction stud while the positive of each cable is going into the in and in of each one of these units. Uh, and then you run a 6BNS black cable from each one of these units to the negative junction stud. And then you do run the positive of each of these units into another MIDI fuse holder, 50 amp fuse each. And from there, you'll find there's a little, if I can open them, they're quite sturdy. There's a little bridge in here as well, so you can run each output into here, 50 amp fuse each, and then run another 6BNS cable from here into connector P5 AUX battery positive. That will feed power into the DC hub and from there through the shunt and through the fuse into the batteries. It's also important that you run another 6BNS cable from this junction point to AUX battery negative on connector P5 so that we've got a ground connection established to this unit as well. Uh, you put an 80 amp maxi fuse in here to protect the connector and if you can make sure to have the junction studs relatively close to the DC hub because from here we run everything through a single 6BNS cable, which isn't a problem because the cable is rated to 100 amp, but we'll have the biggest voltage drop here. So keep that short because everything up to these points is running through two cables all the time. So with that, we have got our DC-DC chargers connected to the DC hub. You can program these now through the Victron app. You can also have them in an ignition triggered mode, please read the manual and you can configure the set points on where they should be turning on, where they should be turning off. If they are ignition triggered, everything's programmable through these things. So you can set it up whichever way you like for your setup. That's DC-DC charging from the alternator. Next part is to establish solar charging. We've got a 50 amp MPPT charge regulator. We've chosen this big unit which is a bit overkill, just in case you want to run a second solar blanket. If you do a lot of induction cooking, you'll find that solar charging power is the one thing that will sustain that. So with this unit, you can run the 200 watt roof solar panel and you can run two 300 watt solar blankets quite easily. 
That's why we picked the big unit. We only deliver one solar blanket with this kit, just in case you need a second one, just chuck an extra one into your shopping trolley on the website. To connect solar to the DC hub, what you're gonna do is you run a six mil twin core cable for the roof solar panel, and you can run that directly into connector P7, unrack solar, positive, negative. And then you can also run and then you can run 8 BNS cable to this Anderson plug, put it in this housing, and this will be your solar plug-in point. That is where you connect the solar blanket. Uh, have a look at the wiring diagram, just in case this is a bit confusing, try to use the wiring diagram while I explain. So you'll have 6 mil twin core cable coming into unregulated solar, and then also 8 BNS. You can put them both into the connector. The connector is big enough to hold both cables at the same time. That way you can now have that continuously charging. And as soon as you plug in your external solar panels, blankets, they will be connected in parallel to the roof solar panel. From there, you use the solar input on P6 and connect that to PV positive with the 8 BNS cable on your solar regulator. What you do next is you link PV negative and battery negative together with the cable or what else the other thing that you can do is just solder two 8 BNS cables together the black side so you can have one going into each side and then the other cable is running back to the DC hub. Please have a look at the wiring diagram. The most important thing to notice here is that you just have to put both negatives back to the DC hub and connect it to P10 negative. Whichever way you do that is all right as long as both 8 BNS negatives run back to P10 negative. And then the battery positive here runs back to P10 positive and all you need to do then is put a fuse in. Uh, use a 60 amp fuse for this because this can pump out up to 50 amps. So you want to have a little bit of leeway in there, extra 10 amps. They're only there just in case something goes wrong. And with that, you've got your solar charging established and you can plug in your solar blankets. You've got your continuously running roof solar. And, and you can also configure this through the Victron app. You can connect to it. All these bits and pieces will usually get a software update as soon as you connect the first time. And then you can change all the settings the way you need to set them. If you are a bit in doubt about what the right settings are, please have a look at the Victron webpage or their Instagram channel. They've got a lot of instructional videos about all these products also about the shunt that also needs to be programmed. Information on how to program that right for a lithium battery system, everything is on their webpage for it. Next thing we need to set up is the brain of the whole mission. We've got the servo GX here. This is what connects all the information together. First thing you do is you plug in a USB and a HDMI cable into the unit here. That will connect your touchscreen monitor. That is the keyboard and the monitor for this little computer. Then you use the VE direct cable that is part of this kit and you go from the solar regulator into one of the VE direct connectors here. Doesn't matter which one you use, it will just work and show up automatically, nothing to do. Then you use another VE direct cable from the smart shunt and connect that to one of the VE direct ports and that will bring your battery readings online in here. And then you open the, or by this stage you would have already opened the bottom of the MultiPlus where all the electric connections are and on there you see a VE bus connector. It's important to note these two here are the VE bus connectors on the MultiPlus. This is Ethernet. 
don't use that, otherwise it won't work. These two. You connect this with the RJ45 cable to the Multi Plus 2 inverter and straight away you will be able to read all the information from the Multi Plus 2 inverter in your system here. Uh, you also have to establish power to this unit. So there is a plug that comes with it. There's actually plenty of plugs for all of these. And you can run the power supply for that to your DC hub, put a fuse in here, and you've got power supply established to this and it will run off your lithium batteries, not flattening your start batteries. After this, the majority of the wiring is done. You've got the 240 volt side hooked up. You've got your batteries connected. You've got your chargers connected. You've got your communication system connected. Solar is all connected. The, the last thing that you need to do is uh, hook up your power sockets. You can use the Anderson plugs up to 80 amps, so you can run a 6 BNS cable from the Anderson plug to P9 and <clears throat> P4. Then you can have two Anderson plugs that can provide 80 amps each. You also got a cigarette lighter socket in here and USB. All you need to do for that is just formal twin core cable back to the 25 amp outputs. Use a 10 amp fuse for it loop it from the accessory socket to the USB socket and you're done with that. After that, we've also got your national lunar lights. They can go onto the canopy doors or inside the canopy or inside your rooftop tent, wherever you seem fit. And all they need is 3 mil twin core cable from the light to the DC hub 25 amp outputs. Put a fuse in there. You're done with that as well. You only need a 3 amp fuse for these. If you put two together, 3 amp fuse is still all right. You can go to 5 amp, but they do not draw more than 1 amp per light. So we've got this established as well. You've got all your fuses there. By this stage, you should have pretty much used all your crimps. Uh, you've got heat shrink here, so you can heat shrink over all your lugs. And I think that's it for this kit. This should give you all the information you need. More information is in the wiring diagram, also on the manufacturer websites. Any more questions, feel free to contact the store, send us an email or just call us. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you very much for watching. My battery is about to die. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is about to die. <laughs>